boys and girls. I am going to read chapter eight of Mr. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Gravenstein. Over on the side of the stage, a shoe that looked like a peeled open banana appeared behind the curtain. When it landed, the shoe burp squeaked. As a second banana shoe burp squeaked onto the floor, Kyle looked up and there he was, Mr. Lemoncello. He had loose and floppy limbs and was dressed in a three-piece black suit with a bright red tie. His black broad-brimmed hat was cocked at a crooked angle atop his curly white hair. Kyle was so close he could see a sly twinkle sparkling in Mr. Lemoncello's coal black eyes. Treading very carefully, Mr. Lemoncello walked towards the podium. The burp squeaks in his shoes seemed to change pitch depending on how hard he landed on his heels. He added a couple of little jig steps, a quick hop, and a stutter, step, skip, and yes, his shoes were squeaking out a song. Pop goes the weasel. On the pop, Mr. Lemoncello popped behind the podium. The crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello politely bowed and said very softly, thank you, thank you, grazie, grazie. He bent forward so his mouth was maybe an inch away from the microphone. Buongiorno, boys and the girls. He spoke very timidly, very slowly. This is how my mama and my papa teach me to speak to English. He wiggled his ears, straightened his back. But then he said in a crisp, clear voice, I went to the Alexandriaville Public Library where a wonderful librarian named Mrs. Gail Tobin helped me learn how to speak like this. If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? I can also speak upside down and underwater, but not today because I just had this dry suit, this suit dry cleaned and do not want to get it wet. Mr. Lemoncello bounced across the stage like a happy grasshopper. Now then children, if I may call you that, which I must because I have not yet memorized all of your names, even though I am working on it. What do you think is the most amazingly incredible thing you'll find inside your wondrous new library? Besides, of course, all the knowledge you need to do anything and everything you ever want or need to do. No one said anything. They were too mesmerized by Mr. Lemoncello's rat-tat words. Would it be A, robots silently whizzing their way through the library, restocking the shelves? B, the electronic learning center with three dozen plasma screen TVs all connected to flight simulators and educational video games? Or C, the Wonder Dome. Lined with 10 giant video screens, it could make the whole building feel like a rocket ship blasting off into space. The game room, someone shouted. The robots, the video dome. Mr. Lemoncello raced back to the podium and made a buzzing noise into the microphone. Sorry, the correct answer is, and not just because of Winn-Dixie, D, all of the above. The crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello whirled around to face his head librarian. Z Dr. Zinchenko, could you, would you kindly help me pass out our first 12 library cards? It was time to announce the essay contest winners. Dr. Zinchenko placed a stack of 12 shiny cards on the podium in front of Mr. Lemoncello. Please, he said, as I call your name, come join me on stage. Miguel Fernandez. Yes, Miguel said, and jumped out of his seat. Akimi Hughes. Woohoo! Kyle was thrilled to see two of his to see his two friends be the first ones called onto the stage. Andrew Peckelman, Bridget Wadge, Sierra Russell, Yasmin Smith Snyder. Yasmin squealed when her name was called. Sean Keegan, Haley Daly, Rose Vermette, and Kayla Corson. Ten kids, all the same age as Kyle, were up on stage with his idol, Mr. Limoncello. He was not. Only two more chances. Ten kids, all this, oh. As if reading his mind, Mr. Lemoncello, only two more, and tapped a pair of library cards on the podium. Charles Chillington. Gosh, really? He dashed up to the podium, started pumping Mr. Lemoncello's hand. Thank you, sir. This is such an honor. Truly, I mean that. Thank you, Charles. May I have my hand back? I need to flip over this final card. Of course, sir. But I cannot wait to spend the night in your library or as I like to call it, your anthedom. Because as I say in my essay, when you open up a book, you open your mind. 
Finally, Charles, the brown noser, let go of Mr. Limoncello's hand and went over to line up with the other winners. And last but not least, said Mr. Limoncello, Kyle Keeley. Kyle could not believe his ears. He thought he was dreaming. But then Akimi started waving from him to come on up. Dazed, Kyle made his way up the steps to join the others on stage. Mr. Lemoncello handed Kyle a library card. His name and the number 12 were printed on the front. Two book covers, I Love You Stinky Face, and The Napping House were on the back. Let's all pose for a picture, please, said the principal. When everyone moved into position for the, for the photographer, Kyle found himself standing right next to Mr. Lemoncello. He swallowed hard. I'm a big fan, sir, he said, his voice kind of shaky. Why, thank you, and remind me you are, I'm Kyle, sir, Kyle Keeley. Ah, yes, the boy who proved what I've always known to be true. The game is never over till it's over. Bong.